Hey, it's Brussels Lovers. Mark here from Whole Latte Love. I'm, of course, well caffeinated and ready to go. So let's get right into some top espresso tips and trends for 2020 and into 2021. Today, I've got a look at flow control, getting the perfect puck, tricking out your ride, the rise of the Quarista, and is it time to try something new? From super high-end machines like the Dalla Corte Mina to E61 Group machines from manufacturers like ECM and Profitech, flow control opens up new possibilities for high-end extractions. Think of emulating the extractions of a variety of machines like a La Marzocco, a Slayer, and manual levers on a single machine. So machines like the Profitech Pro 500, 600, and 700, the ECM Classica and Synchronica I have here are available with or without flow control. And in less than a year, the flow control versions of most of these machines are more popular than those without flow control. If not familiar with the possibilities of flow control, I've linked to a playlist of live streams I did earlier this year with a deep exploration of five different flow profiles. Perhaps the most popular was a profile for working with fresh from or lighter roast specialty coffees. Some really good feedback in the comments on that one from some of you with flow controlled machines who had great results taming the brightness of those types of coffee. Beyond those specialty coffees, you'll learn about profiles for darker roast coffees, bumping up the sweetness, doing coffee shots and emulating the extractions of those other machines. And now a tip with flow control, if you wanna run the machine with stock flow rate, just open the valve to one and a quarter turns and leave it there. Tamping is so 2018, right? If you're in search of the perfect puck for many, distribution tools, levelers, and precision calibrated tampers have surged in popularity. And why not? Espresso is a game of variables with a goal of consistency. It's a pretty simple deal, really. Reduce the variables and you will increase consistency. So right after having great ground coffee, we want the perfect puck. So how to get there? Well, I'll be quite honest. I'm not really all the best with a tamper. Maybe it's all the caffeine, but let's be serious. With one of these, it's tough to get a perfectly flat tamp with consistent compression of the grounds every time. Just a little angle on that puck surface can present a path of lower resistance to brew water and cause uneven extractions and channeling. But with the right tools, you can have the perfect puck every time with no special skills and without ever thinking about it. Now, there are many distributors, levelers, and calibrated tampers available with varying levels of adjustability and precision. For a couple of years, my go-to has been the Jack Leveler. It has easily adjustable depth, is perfectly sized to work with precision filter baskets, and can show off your style with a variety of colors and graphic design options. And the jack can be a one-step tool. With the adjustable depth, you can compress the coffee to the point that no tamping is required. Now, that's how I usually use it, but you can certainly tamp after use if you want to. For the ultimate in puck prep, have a look at the Bravo distributor and tamper. This two-step system first gently levels the coffee with a self-dropping head, which automatically finds the best depth to groom and distribute the coffee grinds. Just place on the rim of your filter basket, give it a few spins clockwise, followed by a few spins counterclockwise. With the Bravo, the depth setting is automatic. Following that, set the self-aligning base of the Bravo tamper on the rim of the filter basket. As you begin the tamp, you'll be pushing against one spring which acts as a guide so travel is 100% aligned, then the upper spring comes into action and limits the amount of pressure applied to the coffee. When you hit bottom, you're done. Underneath a screw cap, tamping pressure is adjustable between 26 and 37 pounds of pressure by turning a small Allen bolt. The Bravo is a pro-grade barista tool endorsed by World Coffee Events International Judge and Dalla Corte Coffee Pro, Danilo Lodi. It's not cheap, but if you want to know, you have the perfect puck. No questions asked. Every time, it is the tool to use. So tricking out your espresso ride is really about two things. It's custom personalization and upgrades to improve performance. 
Personalization is a big trend and growing fast. We all want to have something a little special to, you know, be a little different, to stand out from the average. A great example is the number of machines now available with wood accents. You get custom knobs, porta filters, handles, and more. But that's just the start. Look for that customizing trend to kick into high gear in the coming year with even more options like exotic wood panels, custom colors, and graphic treatments. For performance upgrades, a range of possibilities to go to the next level. We're talking precision filter baskets, which allow for finer grind, deeper extractions, and have features like high-tech quartz coatings for less oil residue and easier cleaning. Shower screens that do away with the actual dimensional screens for more even distribution of brew water onto the coffee and stay far cleaner than the stock screens. Simple things like upgrading to silicone group gaskets for longer life and easier clock in. Bottomless porta filters for a wow factor. They're gonna be really fun to watch and can help improve technique all the way up to high tech app connected scales designed specifically for the espresso hobbyist and pro baristas. If you're looking for upgrades, be sure to check out the Pro Brewing Collection at Whole Latte Love. You can get there from here where you'll find upgrades and accessories that can improve performance on everything from entry level single boiler machines up to top of the line dual boilers. Are you sick of these? Me too. I mean, we're all probably getting some mass fatigue and maybe you're watching this sometime in 2021. The crap is over and life is returning to normal. But for now, go out for a coffee and you're likely wearing a mask. And so is the person serving you. But at home, no mask and probably a better coffee and espresso. A recent poll of 2,000 coffee drinking Americans found that 49% have become a Barista, an at-home barista during the pandemic. And two-thirds of those who've gone there say they'll continue doing it at home after COVID restrictions end. So if you're spending more time at home for the winter months, take the opportunity to join the trend. You know, work on your skills and indulge your hobby and try something new. Impress yourself and those in your circle with improved frothing skills and maybe have a go at latte art. Now, we've got a ton of videos to help with that, and a great example is my colleague AJ's video on milk frothing for beginners that takes you through the process in detail right through to pouring a latte art heart. Commenters on that video say it's the best video they've ever found on the subject. And if you want to pour some art, it's going to be the best place to start. So in the last section, I mentioned trying something new. Of course, it's the coffee beans at the heart of our favorite beverages. But how many of us stick with the familiar favorites and never explore something different? If you are familiar with my videos, you know, one of my favorites is this Maromas Orfea. It's delicious and easy to work with, a classic Italian style bean blend that I highly recommend, and it runs about 10 bucks a pound. But it's not all I drink. We are always trying new coffees, and I've come across many others in completely different styles that I enjoy, like single origin coffees grown at higher altitudes and lighter roasts. Those types tend to have more distinct flavor, are brighter and feature fruit and berry notes. Very different profile, say, than this Carraro Rosso, which surprised us in a taste test last week. It's a 70% Robusta, 30% Arabica. One of the most interesting coffees I've tasted recently. We expected bitter earthiness, but it was actually multifaceted as the flavor evolved in a good way from start to finish in a coffee with creamy body, very mild bitterness, and acidity. Something you should really try. AJ put it best, calling it a roller coaster ride, which he really enjoyed. So if you've been drinking the same, maybe try something completely different. Maybe you won't like it, but maybe you'll be surprised and find something you love. Now, I'd love to hear from you in those comments. Is there a coffee you love? What are your personal coffee trends during the pandemic? Have you tricked out your ride? Would you call yourself a quarista? Any coffee goals for the next year? Use the comments for that or ask a question on anything coffee and espresso. And if you love this stuff, be sure and subscribe to the channel. I'm Mark. I hope you are doing well. Thanks for watching and I'd love to have you come back soon for more of the best on everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.